Hey, welcome to the Christian Home and Family Podcast. I am Kerry Green, a retired pastor who is passionate about equipping people for radical faith that lasts generations. Here's a little sample of what you'll hear on this episode. The key to raising godly children is to first be a godly parent. Now, don't hear me saying you have to be perfect. And don't hear me saying you have to make no mistakes. I mean, that's absolutely not been my experience. We've made plenty of mistakes. We have had plenty of imperfection glaring through in the way that we've raised our five children so far. But what I do want you to hear me say is that your relationship with Jesus had better be authentic, not just something that you do on Sundays. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me again on the Christian Home and Family Podcast. On this episode of the podcast, I want to tell you what I believe is the key to raising godly children. Or another way you could think about it is God-fearing children and the parents who raise them. Because it's not just about your children and the type of people they become in the world. It's about who you are as a parent. And that kind of tips my hand as to what I believe is involved in raising godly children. Now, before we get way deep into this, why would I throw my hat in the ring in expressing my thoughts on such a popular and written to death sort of subject as parenting? Well, it's because what I consider to be the key to raising godly children, in my opinion, hasn't been said enough or loudly enough. And here it is. The key to raising godly children is to first be a godly parent. Now, don't hear me saying you have to be perfect. And don't hear me saying you have to make no mistakes. I mean, that's absolutely not been my experience. We've made plenty of mistakes. We have had plenty of imperfection glaring through in the way that we've raised our five children so far. But what I do want you to hear me saying is that your relationship with Jesus had better be authentic, not just something that you do on Sundays or that you give lip service to. It had better be something more than just religious actions. It's got to be more than moralistic teaching and the corresponding rules that go along with moralistic type teaching. It has to be an ongoing, vibrant, up and down, but always headed upward relationship with Jesus. The reason I say that is because anything less than that kind of an authentic relationship with Christ will smell of hypocrisy to your kids. It will absolutely stink in the nostrils of your children. You can't fool your kids. They will know if you're a fake and they will know if you really mean and live out what you say about your faith in Christ. Your kids want and need the real thing, Jesus. And the best way that you can give them Jesus is to give Jesus all of yourself. I mean, I can't tell you how many times in my life as a parent, the Lord has shown me this in a personal way. And here's what I mean. When I am able to honestly and authentically share with my kids my own honest struggles to know the Lord and the battle that it can be to live that out day to day, I see them respond with teachable, eager, humble hearts to want to know more about that because they intuitively, down in their gut, know that this is a struggle to actually live as a Christian in a world that is opposed to Christ. But I've also seen the opposite side of that coin. I've seen disinterested, doubtful responses from my children when the churchy words coming out of my mouth don't match the attitude of my heart. They can tell the difference. So what does it look like to be this kind of godly parent? And again, it's not perfection, but what does it look like? I know it's helpful to have some practical examples. Well, here's maybe five of them that I can think of. Your children need to hear you talk about Jesus as if he is real to you in the day-to-day -day circumstances of life. Don't just let Jesus be an ethereal kind of personality like 
the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus or Spider-Man. I mean, for goodness sake, he is a real person. He's got to be real to you. And he's got to be talked about that way before your children in the day-to-day events of your life and the things that you face. Secondly, your children need to hear you pray in a way that shows that you truly know the person you're talking to. You see, too often our prayers take on this religious formality of sorts where we use certain words and we have rote phrases of repetition that come out and those kind of things in and of themselves smack of inauthenticity. It it tells our kids, hey, religious talks coming up can kind of check out right now. You see, and we don't want our kids thinking that way. So we've got to learn to pray in a way that our relationship with Christ is being expressed as an intimate thing, as a very real thing. Here's the third thing. Your children need to see your love for Jesus carried out in obvious ways through your commitment to your local church, through your tangible commitment to your local church family, through a genuine expression of worship in your own life, and through a very clear desire you have to honor him in everything that you do. Your children need to see that. They need to see that you really love this person named Jesus. We'll be back with part two of this episode, so please don't go away. There are a lot of reasons you might be listening to the Christian Home and Family Podcast today, and whatever reason it is, I want to be of help. You can reach out to me personally, Carrie, C-A-R-E-Y, at ChristianHomeAndFamily.com. I would love to hear how I could be of help or how I could point you in a direction to get the help that you might need for your marriage or family. Now let's get back to the episode. Fourth, your children need to know by your own devotion that prayer and Bible reading are not just things you do, but that they are the lifeblood of your very existence. You see, If you don't think about prayer and Bible reading that way already, I want to challenge you right now. That really is what prayer and Bible reading are about. They're not about keeping some religious list of checkboxes that you're just checking off every day. Prayer and Bible reading are the lifeblood of our faith because they help us reorient our mind to be aligned with the truth of God. And our children need to know that by our own dedication to it. And we need to be dedicated to it in a way that doesn't communicate. This is just a ritual I'm doing. It's a legalistic thing I've got to stick with. They need to hear about our devotional times with the Lord as meaningful, deep, rich things. We need to share what God is teaching us in those times and what he's saying to us in prayer. So that our children get the idea, because it's true, that that time is our very lifeblood. And here's the fifth thing that I would say this kind of a life looks like. Your children need to see you so absorbed by Jesus that they want to take part in something that is so obviously wonderful as what you've got. Does that make sense to you? Your children are going to want what they think is great, what they think is good, what they see in your life, you are excited about. It reminds me of, you know, the dad who's a football fanatic and his son growing up becomes a football fanatic. Well, why? Well, because he sees from dad, football's a really cool thing. Football is a lot of fun. Football is something to get enthused about. And you see, our children need to see us authentically enthused about the person of Jesus, about the God of the universe who came, lived, died, gave himself for us, and now lives in us. You see, they've got to see us that way. (laughs) So how do we raise godly children? Well, let's begin with the last half of the title of this episode, you know, God-fearing children and the parents who raise them. I mean, we have to start by considering the spiritual health of the parents who raise your children, you. We've got to start there. So here are some questions 
to help you begin. These are things for you to ask yourself, things for you to kind of do a self-assessment. Do you love Jesus, who is the Lord your God, with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength? That's Mark 12, 30. Or is there something else? Maybe it's your spouse, your work, your business, your hobbies, your money that you love more. Take a self-assessment there. You really need to know the answer to that and be able to reorient yourself toward Jesus being the one that you love most of all. Here's another question for you. Do you love your neighbor? And who is that? Well, it's your irritating coworker. It's your demanding boss. It's your pesky neighbor. It's your weird relative. Do you love those people as you love yourself? That's Mark 12, 31. You see, we have to get our hearts right before the Lord in order to be able to live it out in a way that our children can see is an authentic part of who we are. Here's a third thing. Do you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? That's Matthew 6, 33. Or are you more concerned with bank accounts, life insurance, retirement funds, upward mobility in your career? You see, our kids will see what we really care about. They'll see it in the things we talk about, the things we pursue, the things we go after. So assess yourself. Do you seek first the kingdom of God and don't miss the last part, his righteousness as a part of your life? And then along the line of 1 Peter 3.15, do you set apart Christ as Lord in your own heart? Do your kids know without a doubt when they think of mom or when they think of dad, he or she, she or he, whichever way you want to say it, is so totally sold out to Christ? Do they know that? My encouragement is that you start there. You start with that kind of a self-assessment. And then you go on from there by asking the Spirit of God to help you as you begin moving more diligently toward Him. Ask Him to give you a heart that seeks Him first and foremost. He delights to answer those kinds of prayers. My experience, both as a parent and as one who has counseled many parents who are seeking to raise godly children, is this. Don't even think about raising godly children if you are not first and genuinely seeking to be a godly parent. It's my hope that that episode was a blessing and encouragement to you as you endeavor to lead your family to express radical faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. If you would do me the favor of going to the description area for this episode in your podcast player or app, or going to christianhomeandfamily.com slash subscribe and subscribing to this podcast, that will help us rank higher in iTunes and get more people exposed to the message of radical faith for generations. I hope you'll join me again for the Christian Home and Family Podcast. Podcast.